What's going on guys, Pixelated here, back at it again with yet another review. Today we are looking at the Nike X Mark Newson Vapor Max. These released on the same day as the regular and first offering of the Vapor Max, which was on March 26th, 2017, also known as Air Max Day. I found this really odd because it's not typical for a brand to release a collaboration on a pair of sneakers on the day the sneaker makes its debut release. Usually the company lets the design build build a core following and fan base, but I guess when you're Nike and spend 80% of your budget on marketing, you're pretty much guaranteeing eyes on your latest release or innovative offering, especially with the history and how long Nike has endured dominance in the marketplace. A little history on the Air Max and Vapor Max technology, Nike Air Max first debuted in 1987 and was the first shoe to expose that large visible air cushioning unit in the heel section of the midsole. This was the first time a sneaker was somewhat designed like an exoskeleton where the insides were visible on the outside at least partially, or at least the first time it was documented to be purposeful. Kudos to Tinker Hatfield on that as he was the designer behind that idea. At the time, the air unit was only in the heel and in 1997, they finally embedded a full air midsole unit into the sneaker with the appropriately titled Nike Air Max 97 for the year 1997. Fast forward to 2017, which is now in case your calendar is defective. I'm trying to help you out by informing you of current times. We have the introduction of the brand new Nike Vapor Max. This could be considered an evolution along that same Air Max lineage as it went from being a full air midsole now to an entirely exposed, not air, but Vapor Max midsole. There's absolutely nothing covering it or hindering it from performing its joyous acts of cushioning. Apparently, past iterations needed a secondary protective layer such as the hard rubber or foam midsoles that you see on Air Max OGs and just other Air Maxes in general to prevent the air units from busting or damaging. But due to new tech, this is once again not necessary anymore and Vapor Max technology can stand alone on its own. We'll get into more of this sneaker in a bit, but let's go over the smaller details first. This is probably the most expensive retail Vapor Max that released on release day. The reason why the Vapor Max released on March 26th, which is Air Max Day, is to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the iconic Air Max 1, as it is an evolution in some ways of that same technology. I don't know why I went for these over the regular ones because the price is a little outlandish, but it's the only one that I really like the look of from the rest of them. The regular Vapor Max released in an all gray, pure platinum colorway and the OG white and red colorway, as well as an all black colorway and two collaboration colorways with CDG or Comme des Garçons, which were just another all black and all white pair in extremely limited quantities. I honestly don't know if they released anywhere other than certain Nike Lab retail stores, but they're going for crazy amounts of money, which is unwarranted in my opinion. They're basically the regular Vapor Max with a tab going across where the laces typically are with the brand name, Comme des Garçons, debossed over it. The other big difference being that there are no laces on these pairs, and I'm obviously a fan when sneaker companies make a sneaker look good without laces. If you can't tell already, but that collab doesn't deserve to go for that much money in my opinion. Speaking of Nike spending all their money on marketing, Nike opened sneak easy pop-up shops in four locations for Air Max Day. Most of them took place the night before, which would be March 25th. The four locations were New York, Chicago, LA, and hometown Toronto. And the only way to attend, as far as I'm aware, is that you would have to have been invited as a surprise exception for us up here in the six, as if anyone even says that over here anymore, is that there was an Air Max bus touring and posting up at key sneakerhead spots all throughout Air Max month, which was March. And there was a machine inside, kind of like a gumball machine where they give you a token to put in and possibly win a ticket and chance to attend the sneak easy event i wasn't invited nor did i win a ticket just putting it out there i also took an l on all air max releases also putting that out there nike help they were keeping the subject matter of these events very mysterious. Most people who were invited didn't know or weren't made aware of what to expect at these pop-ups. However, it ended up being more or less an introduction to the brand new Nike Vapor Max silhouette while also honoring and acknowledging the past and history of the Air Max legacy, but mainly to show off the Vapor Max. Speaking of which, back to these Mark Newsons, they were pretty limited as it is. To give you an idea of how limited these were, the only store in Canada that got them was Haven. I caught the online drop and bought from there, which I kind of started to regret afterwards because it took about a week and a half to get to me. Would have just been easier to drive down to the store and buy it there because they didn't sell out as fast as the regular Vapor Max, which kind of makes sense because it really was a collab seemingly out of nowhere. And I'm pretty sure most new sneakerheads, which there are a ton of you now, have never heard of Mark Newson. Actually, I doubt anyone sneaker related has heard of Mark Newson. I'm sure there are gonna be a few exceptions, but I think he was popular for designing some sort of table or something. What the f 
fuck is that? I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't even know who he was until I searched him up. It's kind of like saying, listen, Nike is collabing with Steve from accounting for this sneaker. Maybe it'll increase the amount of sneakerhead awareness in your organization's accounting department, but aside from that, you're not really gonna drum up much hype going down that route. There's also the other reason why it didn't sell out as fast. The price point was significantly higher. The regular Vapor Max retails for $190 USD, which in my opinion was already pretty expensive, and the Mark Newsons Nike Lab Edition retails for $200. $75 USD. So that's an entire $60 premium you're paying, which at the end of the day doesn't sound like a lot when you put it that way, but $275 for an untested sneaker is a tough pill to swallow. I mean, I swallowed it, but I doubt most people did too. No solidarity in the sneaker game anymore. I'll be straight up with you, the reason why I swallowed that expensive pill is because I don't really like the Vapor Max silhouette. There, I said it. I think the concept of this Vapor Max midsole is cool. Having the little section and segmented Vapor Max pods is definitely a unique look and is probably functional too since it allows for a lot more flex in the shoe. It just doesn't appeal to me with the uninspiring fly knit upper. At the same time, I'm not a big fan of how Nike's fly knit feels because they fortify it with other stiffer padding that is probably TPU or some sort of hard plastic to keep the shape of the shoe or whatever they spray on the fly knit to make it stiffer. And as much as I appreciate the support, it just doesn't feel the same. So when I saw these Mark Newsons, I said, finally, a silhouette that I can get behind. There's no laces, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm sure you know that from my city soccer reviews. It has that midfoot strap, Yeezy 750 style. Obviously, I'm kidding. I know it's been around since way before then. And it has a high top sock like upper, kind of like the Kith Ultra Boost and the Tubular Doom, which I'm a fan of both silhouettes. Not as much of the Tubular Dooms, but I do like the Kith Tubular Dooms and the Special Forces Tubular Dooms. But I do enjoy that aesthetic character of the shoe. And then I looked at the price tag and said, ouch. Either way, it's not the most versatile colorway, but it appealed to me for certain reasons, which I'll get into in a second. The upper of this sneaker is made primarily of two different materials. Firstly, the high sock style opening is made of Nike's famed fly knit material as is the top of the toe box. Both are in that teal color and the rest of the shoe, the heel area, the mud guard, and the midfoot strap are made of this vegetable tanned or vachetta tan leather. There is even a section for this leather riding up to the back of the high sock and a separate piece stitched on to create a back pull tab with Mark Newson branding on it, aka Mark Newson's initials MN in cursive, along with the only piece of leather not connected to the one piece creating a front pull tab on the opening. We have these crisscross tan stitches running across the edges of the Vachetta tan leather, giving the look of it being stitched in with the fly knit. You can see the stitch on the medial side of the mud guard that shows where this entire one leather piece that creates the upper of this shoe is bound together. Another nice detail is the Nike swoosh embossed on the lateral side of the heel counter. It looks to me like this and the MN branding on the back pull tab have been laser etched into the insole. Otherwise, maybe it was branded in like they used to brand cows in the dark ages. We have this thick stitching running across the back heel as well that connects the leather pieces from the back and holds the back pull tab in place. The star of the show here however is obviously the Vapor Max mid and outsole. These pods that are filled with apparently the most air of any air midsole. Congrats Nike on that feat and if I recall correctly they may actually be more than just air and have some extra chemical in there to add more support in one way or another. You can see that because there's no secondary layer over the pods there's actually reinforced material and treads directly on the bottom of the pods for bubble burst prevention and to serve as traction and grip the floor as you walk. Now I know this isn't a popular colorway for most people and it's not very versatile. There are tons of Vachetta Tan fans out there and that's a fact but that teal color isn't something that sits well with most people. It's definitely a choice colorway for the few who enjoy it. I personally like it because it resonates with me since I was a huge fan of the Miami Dolphins back in the day when Ricky Williams was still in the game. That was a long time ago for the OGs who remember. His decline from the game was a little depressing. I mean he had a stint on the Toronto Argonauts for crying out out loud because he got suspended from the NFL for marijuana use. Anyways, if you didn't know, dolphin colors are teal, orange, and white. So the teal flying it on this reminded me of the dolphins and that time in my life. So it made that high price point just a tad bit easier to digest. Okay, I lied, it didn't make it any easier to digest, but I wanted to review these for you guys anyway. At the same time, no laces and a high top sneaker is something that will always work in my favor. If you've watched my previous reviews, you'd know this. As for sizing, I did go true to size, and I will say this, they do fit a bit snug, which normally wouldn't be a problem. If these were the regular all fly knit version of the shoe, I'd say they're the perfect fit. But because the mud guard on these is a thick Vachetta tan leather, I almost constantly feel it rubbing against my toe, and the stiffness actually hurts and digs in a little from time to time. 
since my big toe sticks out a little. It hits the part of the mud guard where it cuts off and meshes with the fly knit, and so that edge is a little annoying. I will say this, I'm almost 100% certain that problem is only exclusive to me because I am wearing slightly thin socks at the moment. I don't have the same problem when I'm wearing thicker socks. However, that is something to consider if you were on the market for these. They're obviously sold out as of now, so your best bet would be to look at apps like StockX or Goat to buy them. If you're in Canada, be wary, you will get charged customs, so ship to a US address or family in the US if possible. The price isn't much over retail, I don't think. I could be wrong though, as I haven't looked into it. You could probably find a smaller size somewhere, I doubt they're completely sold out, but you would have to dig a little. When it comes to the comfort of the Vapormax, it's a real mixed bag for me on one hand, not accounting for the painful leather to toe contact I'm feeling on one toe for the first wear. I can say that the fit is great, I love the support you get from the leather heel counter area and mud guard. At the same time, the breathability and flexibility of the fly knit on the ankle area as well as in the toe box area are a must. These shoes are surprisingly super light. When I first saw them, I thought they were a high top and mostly leather made, so they might have a bit of hep to them, but they're really very light. The main aspect of comfort here obviously is the Vapor Max midsole. I will tell you this, if you're expecting it to feel like Boost, I know a lot of you out there are waiting for the answer to this question. No, this and Boost are entirely different beings. They don't even function the same way. They're worlds apart. They don't feel nearly the same. Adidas Boost has this cushy pillow-like effect where your foot sinks in. This on the other hand has more of a solid feel. Yes, if you press your heel down hard enough, you'll see the Vapormax pods bending and collapsing to absorb the shock, which is what they're meant to do, but they're not malleable and squishy the way Boost is. You still get a comfortable ride, and to be honest, I can probably walk around in these longer than I can in Boost shoes, just because after a certain point, you don't just want it to feel like your feet are sinking in every time you take a step. At the same time, I don't really see much of a difference between this sneaker and any other Air Max shoes there are. I feel like the comfort is very similar, this just feels lighter and has more flex because of the lack of a protective foam midsole around the Vapormax tech. For casual wear, I'd probably wear Ultra Boost for walking and hanging out with friends, but if I'm doing any type of lots of movement or performance activity, like even going out to shoot where I post up in awkward positions sometimes to get the shot, I would prefer something like the Vapormax just because it's lighter and the treads at the bottom provide more grip. The lack of boost means more stability as well. At the end of the day, both technologies are comfortable and you really can't go wrong with either, but it really depends on what you like. Maybe I'll do a more in-depth comparison in another video of the two. Let me know in the comment section if you like that. I personally am happy with the design of this shoe. I'm glad they offered this as opposed to just the standard Vapormax offerings as I wouldn't have thought twice about not purchasing those. They're not bad shoes, just not my taste. They just feel a little uninspired to me when it comes to the upper. With that being said, hope you enjoyed the review. If you took anything from it, please hit that like button. I want to know what you guys think about this shoe. I think Nike Lab and Mark Newson did a very good job. And as always, hit that sub button for more juicy content. Catch you later. Pixelated, out.